In the early 1960s, a television series emerged, crafted by the renowned filmmaker Alfred Hitchcock. Filled with a spectrum of stories, from amusing to startling to poignant, the show offered a diverse viewing experience. The series holds numerous intriguing details waiting to be explored, making it a captivating journey for enthusiasts of classic television. Amidst the array of memorable moments, there's a particular scene that lingers resonating with audiences even today. It's a testament to the timeless allure of the show and the genius behind its creation. The talent on screen, including a classic Hollywood actor whose performances added an extra layer of charm to the series, has become a favorite among fans. Whether you find yourself drawn to suspenseful dramas or simply intrigued by the world of classic television, this series has something for every viewer. Dive into the narrative, uncovering the layers of each story and relishing the craftsmanship of a master storyteller. Share your own stories and memories in the comments below. What scenes or characters left an indelible mark on your viewing experience? The show, with its ability to elicit a range of emotions, has become a cherished part of many people's entertainment history. Stay tuned for more insights into this captivating series as we unravel additional facets of the Alfred Hitchcock Hour and the genius behind it. It's a journey worth taking for anyone curious about the golden era of television. Television in the 1950s and 1960s was different from today. Shows were often simpler, but still had great acting and stories. One show similar to Alfred Hitchcock Presents was the Alfred Hitchcock Hour. It was an hour-long drama series with surprise endings. Some episodes were really good with famous actors, but others felt a bit slow. The show reminded people of older TV anthologies like Playhouse 90 and Craft Mystery Theater. It was a time when good acting and storytelling mattered more than big budgets. Looking back at TV from that time, you can see the beauty in its simplicity. Even with limited screen time, actors gave fantastic performances. They brought life to scripts written by famous authors and radio playwrights. One episode, Consider Her Ways, stands out as a great example. It's a story that still feels interesting today, with music that adds to the suspense. Watching shows like The Alfred Hitchcock Hour takes us back to a time when storytelling was at its best. In the world of cinema, some filmmakers and actors have made a lasting impression with their work. Think about the movies you've watched and how some performances stay with you long after the credits roll. It's fascinating to learn about the personal views of these artists on their own creations. Let's explore the candid thoughts of one renowned director and the impactful performances of an esteemed actor, shedding light on the inner workings of the film industry and the enduring legacy it leaves behind. Alfred Hitchcock, a legendary director known for his suspenseful storytelling, once openly admitted his least favorite film among his many works. Surprising to many, he expressed his dissatisfaction with Champagne, highlighting the complexities of artistic expression and self-critique even for revered filmmakers. Similarly, John Marley, a versatile actor, left his mark on cinema through his memorable performances in several acclaimed films. His ability to inhabit diverse roles captivated audiences, particularly in movies like America, America, Love Story, and The Godfather, where his contributions were integral to the film's success. Reflecting on Hitchcock's admission and Marley's impactful performances, we see the intricate dynamics of artistic creation and the enduring influence of talented individuals in shaping cinematic history. Their stories serve as a testament to the power of storytelling and the lasting impact of exceptional talent on the silver screen. Alfred Hitchcock was portrayed by Anthony Hopkins in the film Hitchcock. Phyllis Thaxter's husband, James Aubrey, served as the inspiration for a character in Jacqueline Suzanne's novel The Love Machine. In the early 1950s, Hitchcock planned an adaptation of David Duncan's novel The Bramble Bush, set in Mexico and San Francisco, but the project was ultimately abandoned due to budget constraints and script issues. Tippi Hedren and Norman Lloyd had the unique distinction of working with both British cinematic legends of the silent era Alfred Hitchcock and Charles Chaplin. Hitchcock acquired the rights to Village of Stars, a novel by David Beattie, after the cancellation of another project. The story revolves around a RAF V bomber crew tasked with dropping a nuclear bomb, only to face challenges when the order is aborted and the bomb becomes unmanageable. Despite his renowned career, Hitchcock harbored phobias, including a fear of police and eggs. Following their falling out during the production of Marnie, he tried to reconcile with Tippi Hedren. They had several business lunches in 1964, aiming to cast her in Mary Rose. Despite the rejection of the project, he considered casting her alongside Paul Newman in Torn Curtain, but she declined. 
Anne Francis participated in radio programs early in her career and appeared on one of New York's first television stations before World War II. She engaged in an early experiment with color television. Although his wife Alma was an excellent cook, he liked to dine out with her occasionally. His preferred spot was Chasen's, where he reserved a booth every Thursday night for over 30 years. Alfred Hitchcock preferred one-word titles for his films as he believed they were cleaner and more memorable for audiences. Some of his notable works include Psycho and Vertigo. In the late 1950s, he considered adapting Henry Cecil's novel No Bail for the Judge with Audrey Hepburn in the lead role. However, due to changes in the screenplay and Hepburn's pregnancy, the project was eventually scrapped. Hitchcock also had plans for a modernized version of Hamlet starring Cary Grant in the title role during the late 1940s, but the project was abandoned due to potential legal issues. These instances showcase Hitchcock's creativity and his willingness to explore various genres and ideas within the realm of filmmaking. Alfred Hitchcock, known for his meticulous attention to detail, maintained a curious aversion to even glimpsing at his wife, Alma Reville, during her pregnancies. Despite his directorial prowess, he only missed appearing in 18 of the 56 films he helmed. Notably absent from his own creations were The Pleasure Garden and The Mountain Eagle, among others. Hitchcock's later years were plagued by declining health, impacting his productivity behind the camera. In iconic films like Lifeboat and Dial Him for Murder, though absent from the screen, his presence lingered in carefully placed photographs. One of the most successful tie-ins to Alfred Hitchcock's work is a pulp publication titled Alfred Hitchcock's Mystery Magazine. It has become one of the longest-running mystery anthologies, continuing almost a quarter century after Hitchcock's death. David White made guest appearances on various MTM shows, including the Mary Tyler Moore show, Rhoda and Phyllis, portraying different characters each time. As of the fifth edition of 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, Hitchcock is the most represented director with 18 films. These include Blackmail, The 39 Steps, Rebecca, Psycho, and The Birds. Acclaimed actor Harry Morgan directed two episodes of the series, but never actually acted on it. He had guest starred on a previous show, Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Alfred Hitchcock directed Edmund Gwynn in four films. Phyllis Thaxter was dubbed by various talents in Italy, including Renata Marini and Rosetta Calavetta. Doris Lloyd, a seasoned character actress, made her mark in the entertainment industry with a career spanning decades. Hailing from Liverpool, she ventured to the United States, eventually settling in California. Lloyd's repertoire included diverse roles, from British charmen to society matrons. Noteworthy performances include her portrayal of a spy in Disraeli and Nancy Sykes in Oliver Twist. Her talent graced both stage and screen, with appearances on Broadway and in numerous films. Alfred Hitchcock, the master of suspense, faced challenges in adapting John Butchin's novel The Three Hostages. Hindered by dated themes and a plot centered around hypnosis, Hitchcock found the cinematic portrayal unconvincing. Despite his interest in the tragic tale of the arms Titanic, Hitchcock opted for Rebecca over a Titanic film drawn to the ocean liner's dramatic demise. Alfred Hitchcock, prior to entering the film industry, aspired to be an engineer. In 1956, he initially planned an ambitious film adaptation of Lorenz van der Post's novel Flamingo Feather, envisioning James Stewart in the lead role of an adventurer discovering a communist concentration camp. Hitchcock also aimed to cast Grace Kelly as the love interest. However, after an unsuccessful research trip to South Africa, where filming appeared challenging on a budget and facing difficulties with the story's politics and securing Kelly for the role, Hitchcock deferred the project. Instead, he cast Stewart in The Man Who Knew Too Much. During this time, Hitchcock visited Livingstone at the Victoria Falls, where he was a guest of Harry Sawson, a notable resident. Sawson's interaction with Vander Post, including a signed copy of Flamingo Feather, was documented in local papers, and Marion Sawson, his daughter, currently possesses the book and relevant correspondence. George Lindsay, known for his role in The Andy Griffith Show, was part of a cast that off-camera had a tendency to use foul language. This habit, much to the dismay of Francis Bavier, led to a heated argument between Bavier and Lindsay. The dispute escalated to the point where Bavier repeatedly struck Lindsay with an umbrella necessitating restraint. In summary, Hitchcock's initial film plans faced challenges leading to a shift in casting and storyline. Meanwhile, Lindsay's involvement in the Andy Griffith show came with off-camera conflicts, notably with Francis Bavier. These incidents provide insights into the complexities behind the scenes. 
Alfred Hitchcock, known for his famous movies, directed Claire Greet in several notable films, such as Number 13, The Ring, The Manxman, and others. Claire Greet appeared in many of Hitchcock's movies almost as much as Hitchcock himself. Hitchcock also collaborated on a series of books called Alfred Hitchcock and the Three Investigators during the late 1960s and early 1970s. In these books, the main character, Jupiter Jones, won the use of Mr. Hitchcock's limousine in a contest. Hitchcock also wrote introductions for these books, but they stopped after he died, and his famous silhouette was removed from the book covers. Additionally, Hitchcock was good friends with Albert R. Broccoli, who produced the James Bond movies. The helicopter scene in the Bond film from Russia with Love was inspired by Hitchcock's North by Northwest. Some actors like Sean Connery and Louis Jordan appeared in both Hitchcock and Bond films. In Alfred Hitchcock's life, he made it a habit to share his daily experiences with his mother. He struggled with his weight, getting quite heavy in the late 1930s, but he managed to lose a lot of weight in the 1950s. However, his weight remained unstable over time. In 1974, there was a special event to honor his movies at the Film Society of Lincoln Center. Francois Truffaut, who had interviewed Hitchcock before, talked about how Hitchcock filmed love and death scenes, saying they were similar. Hitchcock's unique way of making movies and his personal life had a big impact on cinema. Born with a morbid fear of police, Hitchcock, known for his wrong man themes, never learned to drive to avoid encounters with law enforcement. Director William Girdler idolized him, evident in films like Day of the Animals. Anne Francis, a lead in the series, had two daughters, one adopted in a groundbreaking single parent adoption in California. Her elder daughter bears her trademark mall. Shamley Productions, the production company behind the Alfred Hitchcock Hour, also produced the original Alfred Hitchcock present series in the 1950s and 1960s. Alfred Hitchcock and his wife, Alma Reville, shared a unique connection as they were born just a day apart, both on August 13 and August 14, 2018 and 99. Jenna Rollins and her real-life mother, Lady Rollins, shared the screen in several films, portraying daughter and mother in Minnie and Moskowitz and a woman under the influence. Though they also appeared together in opening night, their roles did not depict a mother-daughter relationship. Alfred Hitchcock, a famous director, made a big difference in movies. He directed many well-known films like Psycho and North by Northwest. Hitchcock lived in Bel Air, California for a long time and made his best movies there. His house on Bellagio Road was a symbol of his creativity. Even though he was very successful, he never finished a documentary about Nazi crimes that he started in 1945. The documentary called Memory of the Camps was finally shown on TV in 1984-85. Hitchcock didn't just make great movies, he also left a strong impression on the movie world. Before making a famous movie, the director faced a big problem. The person writing the script thought about leaving because the job was tough. But the director convinced them to stay and work on it secretly without the studio knowing. In the early 1960s, a well-known place didn't let the director film there because they didn't like one of his earlier movies. We're not sure what he wanted to film there, but it might have been for his TV show. One actor wasn't just known for one role. He appeared in many TV shows and movies, showing he could act in different ways. Alfred Hitchcock, renowned for his directorial prowess, considered his formative years in Germany as the most valuable training ground. The insights gained during this period shaped his directorial journey. During the collaboration on Marnie in 1964, Hitchcock expressed a long-standing desire to adapt J.M. Barry's play Mary Rose into a film. However, challenges arose as his contract with Universal set a budget cap of $3 million for any project, excluding Mary Rose. Despite obstacles, Hitchcock remained persistent, fueled by the hope of realizing this cinematic ambition. In 1963, Hitchcock was slated to direct Trap for a solitary man for 20th Century Fox. The narrative, derived from M. Robert Thomas's French play, revolves around a couple on an alpine holiday. A wife mysteriously disappears, and the ensuing police search takes a bewildering turn when a woman claiming to be the missing wife emerges despite the husband's unfamiliarity with her. Hitchcock's endeavors, from his influential German training to the complexities of film negotiations, illuminate the challenges and determination that marked his career. In the bustling world of showbiz, there's a tale of inspiration that's been passed down through the years. It's about a young actor named George Lindsay, who found himself under the mentorship of a true legend in the mid-1950s. This mentor wasn't just anyone, he was none other than Alfred Hitchcock, the master of suspense himself. Hitchcock's attention to detail was legendary, and Lindsay was captivated by it. 
From the way he meticulously crafted his scenes to the suspense he effortlessly weaved into his stories, there was much to learn from the maestro. As the years passed, Hitchcock continued to work on a pet project known as The Short Night, pouring his heart and soul into it despite his declining health. Collaborating closely with writer David Freeman, he shaped his vision for the silver screen. Even after Hitchcock's passing, his influence lived on. Lindsay, like many others in the industry, carried the lessons he learned from the master with him throughout his career, leaving a lasting impact on cinema. In notable appearances, Doris Lloyd featured in two Oscar Best Picture winners, including Mutiny on the Bounty and The Sound of Music, along with four other nominees such as Disraeli, A Farewell to Arms, The Letter, and Mary Poppins. And Francis declined the lead role in the film Claudel English, which later turned out to be a failure, with Deanne McBain taking over. Additionally, Francis stepped in for Joan Hackett in The Satan Bug. During rehearsals for a notorious scene in The Godfather, a fake horse's head was used, but during the actual shooting, a real horse's head from a slaughterhouse in New Jersey was utilized, although the blood was simulated. Alfred Hitchcock, known for his influential films, directed nine classics recognized by the National Film Registry. These include Rebecca, Shadow of a Doubt, Notorious, Strangers on a Train, Rear Window, Vertigo, North by Northwest, Psycho, and The Birds. Hitchcock, alongside his wife Alma Reville, had a daughter named Patricia Hitchcock. Patricia appeared in three of her father's movies Stage Fright, Strangers on a Train, and Psycho. While Hitchcock directed Frenzy in 1972, its origins trace back to an earlier idea for a prequel to Shadow of a Doubt. The proposed story centered around a charming bodybuilder, reminiscent of the Mary Widow murderer character. The plot involved the New York police setting a trap for the killer, featuring three climactic moments, a murder by a waterfall, a second murder on a warship, and a finale at an oil refinery with brightly colored drums. Hitchcock sought Francois Truffaut's opinion on the script, which depicted explicit sex and violence unlike his previous works. Universal rejected the film despite Hitchcock's promise to produce it for under $1 million with an unknown cast. Actors like David Hemmings, Robert Redford, and Michael Caine were suggested for lead roles. The film, alternatively titled Frenzy or the more 60s-esque Kaleidoscope, remained unrealized. 